DKC. We also have the ability to text to give. You can text to give to that number and follow the prompts. And um, you can put your credit card in there, and it'll actually save it. It, it makes it kind of easy to give. Um, so while you're filling that out, I just appreciate your faithfulness in giving. I'll, I'll start introducing Brother Jerry. This is really like a dream come true for me. Uh, ever since God put it in my heart to, to plant a church, I had this thought in my head, maybe someday I can get Brother Jerry Garcia to come to my church. And I haven't told you this story, but in my third year of Bible college, uh, I was praying and fasting, and I, you, you know, sometimes God will tell you to pray stuff that you don't even necessarily understand the theology behind what you're praying, but you need to listen to the Holy Spirit. So I was praying, God, I need, I need impartation. I need more of the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the manifestation of the presence of God uh, flowing in my life and ministry, and I was reading a book about this. I've got a whole testimony, but I tell this all the time at church. But anyway, uh, you came to Karis Bible College, and he said, I didn't know who he was then, but he had this meeting, and the title of the meeting was Holy Ghost and Fire, and I thought, I need that. And so, so anyway, he came, and he was, he was moving in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and, and here's the thing I want you to understand this morning. I was in the meeting, but he never touched me. All right, never called me out. He prayed for a lot of people. But I received something in that meeting. I got touched by God in that meeting. I was in the room. All right, that's all it takes. Just be in the room. And I and I I got up. And ever since that day, the the presence of God, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, gifts of the Spirit, and healings and things like that have have been uh, much more commonplace in my life. And impartation is real. And so a big part of the reason this church is here, brother, is because of those meetings. And I, I, I really appreciate you and what, what God's uh, done through you. So uh, we believe in that. How many of you are hungry for Jesus? Yeah. Amen. So you can go ahead and pass the buckets. I'm going to tell you one more instruction here before I hand the meeting over. Uh, but Brother Jerry is an awesome man of God. He is a missionary in Mexico, and you've been there, you said 24 years? It's going on 30 years. That's phenomenal. And he pastors with Bobby and Lynn Crow, uh, who are amazing people there. If you know who Andrew Womack is, they all go way back. And uh, so it's, a, it's an honor to have him here. Um, one time, a guy was praying for me, and he, it was like he had 10,000 volts of electricity coming out of him. All right. And so when he went to pray for me, it was like he was an electric current, and then he put his hands on me, and I was wood. Okay? And I was, he was praying for me, and it was like nothing was happening. And I was really discouraged because I thought, man, what, you know, what's wrong with me? And, and I, I, I actually stopped him, and I said, I'm sorry, man. I'm a really bad receiver. And what happened was he looked at me with this look that I'll never forget. He looked at me like I was a crazy person, like I was like like I look at my kids when they're doing something that's real out of character. And he pointed his finger at me and I, he didn't yell, but it felt like he yelled and he said, "God says you're a good receiver." And I said, "I repent. In the name of Jesus, I change the way that I think about myself." Now, I'm going to tell you, since that day, I have been a good receiver. So, so I, want you to, I want you to say this with me. I am a good receiver. I am good at receiving whatever God wants to give me. I can receive healing. I can receive impartation. I can receive a financial miracle. I can receive anything God wants to give me by faith in his marvelous grace in Jesus' name. How many of you believe that? All right, Brother Jerry, come on up here. Give him a, give him a round of applause as he comes. Can you guys put this up here? Thank you, brother. Did we get you... Hallelujah. Well, it's good to be here. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, it sure feels high up here, you know. <laughs> in, in Pachuca, uh, it's a town north of Mexico City, 
and uh, we're at 7,600 feet in the mountains, and so it's, it's pretty high there, so I feel like I'm there right now, you know, <laughs> looking, on, looking down on you guys, and uh, it sure is nice to be here. It's nice to meet new, new people, new faces. We've been at uh, the Karis Bible School here in, uh, in over there. It's an, we're in another little town, right? Okay, yeah. Well, anyway, you know where it's at. And, uh, you know, I encourage you, if you're not going to Bible school, you need to go to Bible school. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You'll learn. I'm telling you, we started a school of evangelism. It's called Go Academy in, in, in uh, Pachuca. And what we do is because I'm, I'm doing crusades around the country and, and uh, uh, we transitioned into the evangelism, evangelist. And so we, we, we saw that there is not, the gift of the evangelist is not an operation in Mexico. And so uh, you hear evangelists from other countries, from all around the world, but you don't hear any um, names from Mexico as, as evangelists. And so just God put it in our heart. And we have today, this, this, this school year, we have 17 people, 17 students. And uh, we're training them, and they, they go with us to the crusades. They learn how to do a crusade. They, they minister out on the streets. And so uh, we've been... You know, we've been missionaries in Mexico, like I said, for 30 years, my wife and I. And, uh, and so we're just happy to be here this morning. Are you ready to receive this morning? Oh, yeah. Amen. Are, are you hungry for God? Yes. Okay, thank you for your enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah. Are, are you hungry for God? Yes. Amen. No, are, are you hungry for God? Yes. You know, because hungry people do strange things. Uh, hungry people will travel hundreds of miles to be at, uh, you know, last night I was watching a, a Kenneth Copeland miracle service with Billy Burke, and there was a man, and it just touched my heart because hungry people will travel as far as they have to, to, to be in the presence of God, to be where there is a place where the presence of God will manifest, to be where there is a place where faith is in operation. And this man came all the way from Thailand. I don't know if anybody else saw that last night, but he had, brother, he had a tumor growing out of his face on top of his eye. It, it just looked, it, it was, I mean, it really would, would uh, it made me cry to see what the devil, just sickness does. And it was crossing over onto the other side and he, was, he couldn't see because the tumor was growing out of his forehead on top of his eye. And he said, I traveled 12,000 miles. He said, I was watching, on, I was watching on, on the internet. He said, the programming on the healing services that they've been going on for a week. He said, and I traveled 12,000 miles. He said, to be here. He said, to be here and, and you know, I mean, he could be in a hospital. He could be in, you know, he could be in a, in a deathbed. But you know what he did? He's got a big old ball coming out of his face right here. And he's, he's believing God that that thing's going to be torn off. Hallelujah. Be taken off. And I'm telling you, we're in those days. Amen. We're, we are in those days. And you be believing. Pastor Lawson will be here Wednesday. And there are going to be miracles. Hallelujah. And when we get together and we believe in the name of Jesus and we come together together in one place and we believe things are going to happen. The atmosphere is charged with miracles. Amen. The atmosphere is charged with faith. And I want to share this morning a little bit about the, the power gospel. Amen? Amen. Amen. The power gospel. Because, you know, the, the, the message that we have, it, it's not just another message. It's, it's a powerful message, amen? It'll transform people. It'll change people. And, you know, this message is not just solely uh, encomendado. You know, in Spanish, I'm looking for the word in English. Uh, it's not solely given to the pastor so that he can do this and preach this powerful message. And, and you, you, you just come and listen. No, 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 no. Every one of you has been commissioned to take this power gospel to wherever your sphere of influence is at. Wherever you live, wherever you work, wherever you do your daily uh, life, you are to take this powerful gospel. You are to take the presence of God. You are to take this presence of God. You know, the presence of God, brothers and sisters, is tangible. Amen? Amen? The presence of God is tangible. The presence of God can be felt. 
The presence of God can linger in places. Hallelujah. The presence of God can, can go and, and be, uh, I'm carrying, a, I've been carrying it since yesterday. There, it's, it's a cloth. It's a prayer cloth. And to, today after church, I'll be giving it to somebody. I haven't seen them yet here, but they said they'd be here to pick it up. Okay. And uh, they're believing God for something. And you know, the, 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 the tangible presence of God, well, the apostle Paul believed in this. That he would pray for aprons, that he would pray for handkerchiefs, and they would be taken to the sick. They would be taken and they would be laid on people. And if there was any evil uh, oppression from demons, they would flee in the name of Jesus. That uh, sicknesses would flee, things would happen. And you know something? A lot of times we think, well, that was great, you know. No, I'm telling you, it is for today. Hallelujah. This gospel is for today. This gospel, this power of the gospel, it did not have an expiration date. It's still alive. Hallelujah. This gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world and then the end shall come. But you know what? Before that end comes, you and I must do a job. Hallelujah. You and I must take this gospel to the ends of the world. You and I must take this gospel wherever we go. And there, there was a man, a businessman in our church in, in Ciudad Victoria. And uh, we, we were... We, we had a revival in that church that lasted for about 15 years. Okay? I'm telling you, there was, it, it was a presence place. There, Presbyterians would come and they'd be shaking. You know, uh, Methodists would come, people, Catholics would come, you know, predominantly Mexico has a big Catholic population, but they would come and, you know, you didn't have to, you didn't have to start. He said, when we got on the, when, when we got on the grounds of the parking lot, we felt that something was there. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I'm looking forward to those days again. I've seen them. And if you've seen it once, God can do it again. Hallelujah. And God can do it again. That's right, Pastor. The, those are good words because I said one day, I said, Lord, if you're looking for a place to manifest, if you're looking for a church to manifest, if you're looking for a church, look no further. This is it right here, Lord. This is your church. Hallelujah. This is your church. Come here, Father, and manifest here in this presence. Do you know that God can do more with his presence than we can do with counseling? God can do more with his presence than we can do with words. You know, the spirit of the Lord is upon us. Yeah. Amen. The, the more conscious you are, the more aware you are of the presence of God in your life, the more manifestation of the life of God there will be in your life. The more aware you are. Brother Hagin said it this way, that, that there are so many gifts and, and, and so many impartations in us. He said, but the more aware we become of what is in us, the more they will manifest. Amen. Hallelujah. So Brother Max, you got to... Work on that. Get, get, get more aware of his presence. More aware. Because it's already there. <laughs> it's already there. But let me tell you a little story. Uh, my wife and I were, we, there, there was this, this brother from the church. And he's a, he's a pilot. And he flies Pastor Bobby's uh, airplane. And we went to the border together. And his mother went with us. And his mother is about 80 some years old. And, and uh, she, she's been... We've, we've tried to invite her to the church, but she's, she stays home. She just was like in a state of depression, really. And, uh, you know, depression is, is an evil thing. And it is not from God. Nothing about it is from God. And God doesn't want you depressed. God wants you full of the joy of the Lord. Amen. Amen. God wants you full of the joy of the Lord. He wants you full of joy. Hallelujah. He, want, he wants you to, to just, you know, you, you just have a smile on your face. Amen. You just have the joy of the Lord being your strength daily in your life. And we went to the border and uh, we rented a car at the airport and, and crossed over to, to the United States. And, uh, and, and she was sitting in the back with my wife. Well, my wife has an anointing to set women free. 
she has an anointing to just break the chains of, you know, identity crises in people and in, in women and, and becoming who they are in Christ Jesus. And, and, you know, just she just has an anointing and she does women's conferences all over Mexico and in different places. And and uh, she just she was just sitting there in the back and I could listen. You know, it's a small, uh, small Nissan car. I could listen to what they were saying. And the, the, the older lady was telling her that she she just. She, she was just at home. She didn't want to do nothing. She didn't want to go shopping. She didn't want to do it. You know, not going shopping for a woman, that's severe. Okay? <laughs> I know firsthand. I have four girls and one wife. So, you know, I spend my life at the malls. I just look for the best sofa, the best seat, and I just continue to move on you know, just following them. I camp and they, they bring their bags and I hold their bags. And so, but this woman said, I don't even feel like going shopping. I don't feel like going outside the house. I don't feel like seeing anybody. And she said, my father died, my uncle died. And, and then some, some relative that was very close to her had passed away. And so just things like that. And, and I imagine her thinking I'm at eighties, I'm in the eighties. So maybe I'm next, you know, this the devil will attack your mind with all kinds of things. And I'm telling you, my wife, I never heard my wife say anything. Just listen to her and just listen. And we just, we crossed over into the United States. They went to where they were going and we went to where we were going. And a few weeks later was Thanksgiving and we invited them to our house in Mexico. And she was sitting there and she told my wife, you know, that day that we were sitting in the car and I was talking to you, she said, something came out of me. Okay, something came out of me, she said. And, you know, I got to the hotel that day, she said, and I told my son, would you take me to the mall? And she said, I spent the whole day at the mall from one store to the other. She said, I just feel, she said, I feel renewed. I feel refreshed. I don't know. He said that sadness left. And I'm telling you, brother and sister, you can be the carrier of the power of God and you don't even have to use words. You just have to be there and God can deliver people with your presence. God can touch people with your presence. And as we become more aware of the presence of God. The Bible says in Romans, if you'll go with me to Romans chapter one, uh, I just, I just want to share a few minutes with you. I have a few minutes to share and then um, just believe God, hallelujah, for an impartation in this place. Romans chapter one. You'll have to bear with me. This is one of the first times this year I preach in English. Okay, this is not my native language. <laughs> Romans chapter 1, verse 16. It says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Therein, for therein the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Do you know that there are many churches today on in this country? Let's just talk about America. We're in America, but there's a lot of churches in America that are ashamed of the gospel. Amen? They're ashamed of the gospel because they're ashamed of the gospel because the gospel can set the demonized person free, and they don't want that in their church. OK, the gospel will will save people. The gospel will deliver people. And and a lot of churches do not want this power gospel. They want a good message and that's about it. But they don't want the power gospel. I'm telling you today, if you want the gospel, you got to have the whole package. Amen. You got to have the whole thing. You, you can't have a part of Jesus. You got to have the whole Jesus. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I want Jesus in every form, spirit, soul, and body. Hallelujah. I want that power of Jesus. I, we, 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 uh, we pastored with Pastor Bobby and Lynn for 20 years almost. And five years ago, we, we left Ciudad Victoria and we went further to the central of Mexico, to Pachuca Hidalgo. And I thought I was done pastoring. I, I thought, you know, I pastor pastors in different countries and different cities in Mexico. And what I do is I visit them and I just, you know, uh, mentor them and, and just speak into their lives. I minister to their churches. And so I was I was happy doing that. And the Lord said, you're not done pastoring. 
The Lord didn't tell me that. He told my wife that. <laughs> and so husbands and wives, listen to me right now, husbands, especially husbands. If your wife hears from God, God doesn't have to talk to you, husband. If he tells her something, it's both of you. Amen? Amen. And when, when God speaks to my wife, I don't have to go and ask God, God, is that true? You know, no, <laughs> I know it's true. And, and that's what God wants me to do. And I don't have to go and, and fast for 15 days to find out if that's God's will for me. We're one flesh. We're, we're one flesh. And so she would tell me, Jerry, we're not done pastoring. We're not done raising up people. We're not done uh, training leaders. We're not done yet. And I said, Ernie, I, have, I don't want, I don't feel, I don't have any desire to pastor anymore. We've already done it for almost 25 years. I don't want to do it anymore. And every time I got off the turnpike, every time I came off the turnpike, to go into Pachuca from, from traveling to preach in some other place, I would get off and I'd do that circle around to get on the highway into Pachuca. I could feel in my heart. I could, I could tell you, I could almost hear the voices of people. We're waiting for you here. We're waiting for you here. And, uh, you, you know, we started... We started looking for buildings. We started looking for a place. And, you know, just like you all are right now, this is just transitionary. This is just temporal. Amen. Uh, a building is coming. Facilities are coming. Growth is coming. And, you know, just God has big plans for this church. Amen. Because God's looking for a church that will be willing to manifest the power of God. God is looking for a church that will want to manifest the power of God. God is looking for a church where He can come and be God. Hallelujah. Where He can come and invade the property. Where He can come and just invade their services. Where He can come. I'm telling you, I tell the Lord, Lord, this is your church. And you can come here and you can disturb my service any day, Lord. You can do whatever you want. You can heal whoever you want to heal. You can deliver whoever you want to deliver. You can prosper whoever you want to prosper. Lord, you can do whatever you want to do. This is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, there are not many places that God can do that. There was a man that was outside of a church and he was crying. And this man came up to him and uh, he says, why, why are you crying? He said, they won't let me in that church. And uh, he says, they won't let you in the church. He said, no, they won't let me in. He said, I'm not well-dressed enough to go into the church. He said, well, don't worry. I've been trying to get in there for years, too. My name's Jesus. <laughs> 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 and it's true. It's true. 